everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. Today's video is gonna be all about audio. We're gonna be upgrading the speakers in the wagon behind me. This is our daily wagon that's got over 240,000 miles. It's been on countless road trips with music blasting. I mean, we're, we're, we're not really audiophiles per se, but I do like to have you know, good music with a lot of bass. So we're gonna be upgrading all of our speakers with the Bath Sound kit for this car. So Bath Sound actually sent us these speakers and a lot of you guys have requested speaker upgrade videos, what are my recommendations, and a lot of people know Bath Sound because they're very reputable in the BMW and Mini community. They're probably one of the only plug and play solution um, for your car. That way you can literally knock this out within a couple hours if, it's, if you're a beginner and with very basic tools. You don't have to you know, crimp anything, you don't have to do any of that. It's, everything is just plug and play. So one thing for us, the wagon already has an Android system. Uh, it's made by Seacane and BMW Selena, she's the one that actually made a video on that. So if you guys need an Android unit, be sure to check that out or you can go look at the Eonon videos that I've created on my channel. And all those systems are pretty good. They're all basically the same thing as far as the type of software and hardware. Just do your own research because there's a lot of newer systems out there now. But back to the speakers. So we're gonna be keeping the stock amplifier. Everything else is staying stock. All we're changing are the speakers. Depending on your car and depending on the package that you have, you can go on the Bath Sound website and get the exact one that you need. So before we even get started with the video, I do wanna say that I'm gonna give my honest and unbiased opinion on these speakers. I've done speaker upgrades before with the custom route where you get your own speakers and you, know, you wire them in, uh, you put a custom amp and all that stuff. But this is just gonna be on the quality based on what it was from stock to the upgrade on Bath Sound. So these speakers are under $500 for the whole upgrade um, without the amp, so just the speakers all around the whole car. And that's, I mean, not really that cheap, but because of you know, how user-friendly and DIY-friendly this whole install is, it is worth the price. And we will see exactly how they sound compared to the stock. Um, it's really hard to capture on camera, but I'll just give you my opinion on what I noticed um, from you know, what I've listened to for the past three years and like you know hundreds of hours on the road with the current speaker system, which is the stock hi-fi system, compared to the new Bath Sound upgrade. So the install is pretty straightforward. We're gonna be removing all of the door panels. The speakers on the E46s are attached directly to the door panel. So you just unscrew them, you put the Bath Sound speaker in, then you plug it back in. Only thing that's gonna be different if you don't have a wagon and you just have a sedan or a coupe, you're gonna have a rear shelf where your back two speakers are gonna be. For us, we have to remove part of the whole trunk assembly in order to get to those speakers, but we're gonna be showing that on here for anybody that does have a wagon. Now, the tools that you're gonna need are very simple, just a basic set of screwdrivers, a torque set or torque screwdrivers, and a socket set doesn't hurt either. So this is exactly how the speakers arrived in this box. Let's just go ahead and open it and see what all is in here. All right, so we've got a mid-range harness. This is the tweeters. Well, they even sent us some decals. It's for the front tweeters. I guess it's a bracket to attach them. This is the harness for the tweeters. The mid ranges. Another mid range harness. More mid ranges. We've got some glue. This is probably for the brackets and for the harnesses. Oh yeah. They look almost exactly the same as far as the size and everything goes. And I mean, I figured they would be in order to fit in the stock location. The harness is a little bit different. So all four of these are gonna be the same. The mid ranges are all gonna be the same as well. There we go. And these are the tweeters. So I just finished installing the whole BAP Sound Stage 1 speaker upgrade on my E46 wagon. If you wanna know how to do it, stay tuned. We'll have the whole DIY later on in the video. But for right now, let me go ahead and give you my review on the speakers. All right, so I can't really play a lot of the music because copyright issues. So I'm on no copyright sounds, just trying to find something that 
sounds decent enough to test the speakers. All right, let's see. All right, this was released three days ago. Let's see what it sounds like. Yeah. Victory in a can. So clear, holy. Wow. Yeah, that's really, really clear. And you can feel the bass, even with the door open, I can feel it on my leg. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, compared to the stock system, wow, this is a lot better. I mean, honestly, a lot better. I've got the Harman Kardon system in my uh, S54 sedan, and trust me, this blows it out of the park. And this is not the only, like the last snippet that I played, I already played music before that. And I mean, I've had another car with Rockford Fosgates all around as well. And I, th I would say this is pretty much on par with that system because that system had an amplifier and everything was already tuned properly to the, you know, all whatever crossovers and everything it was tuned by a professional. And it sounds very, very like similar to that. Obviously that system was a little bit better because it had a subwoofer and all that as well. But as far as just the speakers and everything is concerned, Oh my God, it sounds like night and day compared to what we had in here before. And the ones that we had in here before, I know you guys, if you guys stay tuned for the installation part, the whole DIY, you can see two of the speakers that we had were completely blown apart, but they were blown in the last month or so. So we actually had a decent sound system for most of the time that we've been in this car. So overall, I'm very, very happy with this speaker upgrade. It honestly is worth the money as far as how everything installs. You don't have to really make any custom brackets or anything. The one thing that does kind of bug me is the glue part. Um, I'm not really a big fan of glue because whenever you glue something in a car, especially if you're in a hotter climate in the summer, that glue is eventually going to melt. But for the most part, everything else installed pretty good. Um, the only other concern I also had was the speakers in the front and the ones that go in the back without an adapter for the plug. So they're just two terminals that you just slide into the plug, the stock plug. I really wish that they had found a way to actually provide uh, a plug or an adapter. That way you don't have to just have the pin just sitting in there without anything holding them in place. Um, a, way, a quick way to fix that would be to just cut off the plug off your stock speakers and then just solder them onto the you know the current speakers and go like that and that would work perfectly with no issues and I'm pretty sure even with just these pins holding in place I'm pretty sure they're not gonna pop out but just for longevity I really wish it was just like a normal plug but besides that I mean I'm really happy with these speakers and I do think like I said before they are worth the money I'll have a link down below as to where you can buy them um, and Hope you guys enjoy them as much as I'm going to. So now stay tuned for the DIY on how to install these speakers in the wagon. All right, so there are no instructions included with the whole kit that they sent me, um, but they do have instructions on their website, and they also have videos for the whole DIY as they, you know, as they see it should be done. Even though you're watching this video, I would still recommend watching their videos on their detailed instructions on how to install this, uh, this whole kit, as well as look at their website for any other documentation they have. For us, let's just get right into it and start taking off these door panels. We're gonna start out here in the front because this is probably one of the more involved things since we are gonna be replacing the tweeter, the mid-range, and also, what's that called? <laughs> I'm only gonna show one side, like, so we're gonna start out with the whole passenger side because it's the same exact thing on the driver side. If you need a, like exact instructions on how to remove door panels and stuff, we'll have those videos linked down below as well. So we're just gonna start out right here. We're gonna begin by removing this trim, then we're gonna remove this cover. On the driver's side, you're gonna have the, mirror, the side mirror switch right here, which is the same process as we remove this cover, except you'll have two connectors, or you might have one. Just pull those connectors off. Then we're also gonna remove the two tabs that are down here. We're missing them on this door panel, but they're just little plastic tabs that you have to pull off. Usually they're very brittle and they're always gonna break. So just be careful, as careful as you can be. And there's two more screws right there. 
Let's get right to it. Don't mind this, we used to have the ZHP silver cube trim, but all of it, as you can see, just started popping off, and we just removed the little metal section, that way it wouldn't rattle. So, to remove the trim, you wanna start from this corner right here, pull it off, you're gonna pull it away from the door panel, and go slowly until you get up here, because there's two tabs. There's these two tabs that sit inside of this that you wanna pull off gently. Now, all the screws that we're gonna be removing are gonna be T20, so get a T20 screwdriver is probably the easiest way to do this, especially for the ones that are on the armrest. So this is the longest screw. Now the rest of these screws are the same size, so it's okay if they get mixed up. To remove this, you want to use like a trim tool. You can also use a flathead. All this, pretty much the whole interior in this wagon, it has went through a lot because our, our, our... <laughs> bruh. The interior in this wagon has gone through a lot. It's at 240,000 miles. We got it with right around 170 and it was already pretty trashed. Our plans are to change the whole interior to a different color and everything. So we haven't really kept up with it as much as we'd like. We've used it as a parts hauler back in LA. We've used it as our daily with all the dogs and everything. So that's why it's a little bit messy. So for us, we're not really worried about these scratches and stuff. And it's a beige interior. So it's not that big of a deal. We're just gonna pull it off. You wanna stick your trim tool or your flathead right in this section right here or right here. And you wanna pull it off. Yeah, we're gonna need the flathead. And this is exactly the same process on the driver's side with that side mirror switch. So you wanna stick it right here in this opening and lift up. You can also pry from right here as well. Now there's another T20 screw in here. This one you might not be able to pull out all the way unless you have a magnet, but don't worry if it falls, when you pull the door panel off, you should be able to just wiggle it out. It's the same thing with these two. There's two T20 screws inside. Once you have that little cover off, if they fall in there, don't worry about it. When we pull the door panel off, we'll get it. Once all the screws are removed, only thing that's holding the door panel in place are the plastic push pins all around it. We want to start from the bottom, so use your trim tool, stuff it between the door and the panel, and pry against the door. Now we're going to do the whole bottom first. With all those push pins taken off, now we're gonna pull from this corner. All these brackets are pushed into the door panel on this plastic section right here, and you wanna lift it off with this door lock. So it's like this, you wanna lift it up and off. Now the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to remove is this door latch cable. So you wanna pull from right here, There's a little tab, so you want to disconnect that tab, and then you pull it straight out. Now we've got a couple of connectors for the speakers. This one, just grab the connector, pull it straight out. This one, there's two tabs, so push the two tabs together and pull straight out. So before we get started on the door panel speakers, we're going to remove this tweeter and replace that first. We have to remove this plastic cover that goes all the way around the window frame, so make sure your window is brought down, and there's... We're gonna start by removing it from the bottom right here. There's two push tabs, one right here and one right here. You can try prying them off with like a flathead or you can just grab this plastic trim and just pull with it and they'll pop right out. Now one more right here. Now we're just going to pull it off from right here. You want to pull away from this door frame. Now we don't need to pull it off all the way, just enough so we have access to the tweeter. So we're going to pull it down from right here. And that gives us a pretty good access. So now you can see this foam piece on the stock tweeter. The foam piece is just sitting there so you just pull it straight out. 
Now be careful with all the wiring. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the tweeter first. So you have to pull back this vapor barrier just a little bit. And you can see this yellow wire that's going to that tweeter. You wanna pull the connector out from this plastic bracket that's holding it in place and just separate the two connectors by pulling them apart. So now you'll see that we have two bolts that are holding this tweeter in place. The bottom bolt, the tweeter just slides over. So you don't have to really take it off all the way. We're just gonna loosen it a little bit. The top one, you are gonna have to remove all the way because it goes through the tweeter. And these are both T30. So like I said, we're gonna loosen the bottom one just a little bit. The top one, we're gonna remove all the way. So the main reason you don't want to remove this bottom one all the way is because this is what's actually holding the side mirror in place. We've got this bolt right here, that one, and then one in this cavity right here. So with that bottom one loosened, you should be able to lift it up and off. And there's the stock tweeter. We're going to go ahead and tighten this bottom one back in place because we're not going to need to use that. We're going to use this bracket on the tweeter that they provide. They also provide this bracket and you can see it's labeled tweeter and vehicle. So we're gonna use a tweeter side, put it behind it, and then there's a screw that they provide as well with this walker. Get that in place, and this is the Phillips head. Now let's put it on the car. So with this bracket, we're actually gonna angle it, so we're gonna bend it to point it towards the actual passenger. So you might have to bend it a little bit so we can get it started on the threads. And we're gonna put that T30 screw right back in place. So now we're gonna point, we're gonna bend it and point it towards the passenger. Don't worry if it feels like a little loose, that washer keeps it so that you can move it around a little bit. So you can test fit the foam back in place, make sure everything covers it. You can adjust the angle. And that does the trick right there. Once we have all that secure, don't worry about the wire, just make sure it's coming out the bottom right here. So we can go ahead and put this section back in place. So you wanna start from wherever you stop taking it off. You wanna push you can see the rubber seal, so this needs to sit, this lip needs to sit on top of that rubber seal. So get that back on first. And now you can see this section of the door that's coming through. So you want to push from right here and get it curved up on top of it. Same with this section right here, you want to get it in this groove right here on the rubber seal. With all the rest of it attached, we're gonna just go around this door hinge. Once you have this trim put back in place, make sure the rubber seal is around it properly, all the way around here, even around this hinge section. And then we can finally put the two push pins back in place. With all this put back together, we're gonna to have to use this adapter to attach this new tweeter to the factory wiring. So this just plugs in. It'll clip right here. Now you wanna feed this through the bottom and plug it into this. That will also make a satisfying click. So on the door panel, we've got two speakers that we gotta take care of. We're gonna do the easiest one first. We wanna remove this rubber insulation if you have it. Well, it might not be rubber, it's probably cork. Whatever it is, remove it. And you can see just how bad our speakers were blown. These are the original hi-fi standard speakers, and here's the material just falling right off. Let's go ahead and take them off. They're, they're held in with three Phillips screws. 
With the screws removed, you can just lift it right up and off. Now you can see how we're missing that whole outer ring on this speaker except for this one corner. That means it's blown. So here's the replacement. Let's turn it around. Just line up the holes and screw it right back in. With all the screws tight, you want to remove this rubber section. This is just to protect that magnet so that way nothing gets you know caught on there. And we're going to reuse this insulation. We're going to put that around the connector and just put it right back in place. Moving on to this, you want to unscrew this ring right here, just counterclockwise. Then push this whole section right through. There we have it. Now we're going to remove the speaker by undoing all these four tabs. So you just want to push the tab away from the speaker. And you can just pull it straight out once all four tabs are released. So here's the new speaker and we're going to secure it into this. So there's two tab openings that might fit on here if you don't have the metal clips that they provide. So if they don't provide the metal clips, then you're going to have to glue it in with the glue that they provide. So we're going to try to get two of the tabs secure on these little sections and then we'll glue, put a little bit of glue on each corner. Well, circles don't have corners, so we'll put a little bit of glue around it. So just push it down all the way. These two tabs are secure. But it still moves around a little bit, so we're going to put a little bit of glue around, uh, around this whole speaker. Just putting it on the corners and then I'll spread it down to the actual speaker in a little bit. The glue has cured, so now we can install it back into the door panel. What you want to do is you want to go from the outside of the door panel, just push this back through. And we're going to use this ring that was on there and just screw it back together. This is an adapter that was also included for this mid-range. You want to just secure that in. It'll clip right in here. One thing you'll notice is the plug for this lower speaker just has these two terminals. And the way that works is you just want to hook it right into the connector. So the red one will go to the blue and red and the black one will go to the blue and brown. Now on the driver's side, the red one will go to the blue and white, and the black one will still go to the blue and brown. So on, on this is the passenger side, blue and red, and the black goes to the blue and brown. Here's the connector for the middle speaker. Now we just want to secure the harness so it doesn't move around too much. Usually it goes into these little push pins right here. Um, there's a little bracket that's attached to it. They almost always break. What you can do is you can put a little bit of glue on it. You can zip tie it to a certain like area. For us, we're just going to leave it like this because we're going to be changing out these door panels in the future. So we're, there's no need for us to do that. Now we have this door latch cable. So what you want to do is you want to slide it in. And then you just push it down and that tab will catch onto the door panel right there. So you want to get the door lock in first, right here. Then you want to slowly line everything up. So look at all of the pins that are all around the door. Make sure everything is lining up before you start pushing it in place. Once the door panel is pushed in with all the pins, then we're going to screw everything back together. The long screw goes right here, then the rest of the short ones, they're all the same. One right here, one inside this opening, and two underneath this handle. And once again, they're T20. With all the screws secure, now we can put the trim and the cover back on. On the driver's side, make sure when you're putting this door panel on, there's two wires that need to go, one or two wires that need to go to the mirror switch on the driver's side. Make sure those wires are already fed through here. That we can just plug them into the switch and pop it right back in. So on the passenger side, there's no mirror switch, so there's just this cover. So just push that back in. 
As far as the trim goes, you want to make sure these two tabs slide into this door handle. And then just push everything back in. And also if you have the two clips for the bottom, the two covers, make sure you push those back in as well. So moving on to the rear door. We are actually missing this piece of trim right here. It, we had the ZHP cube trim, but it just broke. So that's why ours is already off. But if yours isn't off, all you need to do is you need to start from this corner. You need to pull off to get these metal tabs out of these plastic tabs. So you just want to pull it from right here and let it slowly take off each one of these. And when you get to this section right here, you need to pull out these two tabs. And you pull those out from right here, so you need to slide it that way. So there's no screws or anything holding it in, just these tabs. Now you'll see two T20 screws. We'll take off this one first. So this is the longest one, the rest are the same size. Now we need to remove this window switch. So you just use your trim removal tool or a flathead that's wrapped in something so you don't damage the door panel. To remove the connector, you just hold the connector and pull it right off. Now there's another T20 screw in this opening. So just use your screwdriver or whatever you're using. That's T20. You want to unscrew that. It might be hard to pull it out all the way. So you can use a magnet tool or just wait until the door panel comes off. Now we've got two tabs right here that are covering the other two screws. So you just want to pull these down. You want to start from out here first. These are usually brittle so they might break. So this is how it's in there. You want to use the tool and get it underneath right here. Pull that down and then slide it out. As I said, they're pretty brittle. And there's two more T20 screws in there. And these probably won't come out either until you pull the door panel off. To pull the rest of the door panel off, you're going to have to pull it off of these push pins that are all around it. So you want to start at the bottom. Use your trim removal tool, stuff it right in between the gap between the door panel and the door. And pull off all the bottom first. Then we're going to start from this corner. You're going to pull it directly straight off of this. I'm going to lift it off of the lock. Now for the door handle, you just want to pull from the, the base of this right here, pull up and out. You can see there's a little tab right here that holds it in place. You can pull the connector for the window switch out from the opening and then disconnect the speaker. Just pull the, t uh, just pull the connector straight out. With the door panel off of the car, we can remove the speaker. This is the only one that's on here. You're just going to twist it like you're taking off a screw, so counterclockwise. When you're done twisting it, this cap should fall right out. So this is the cover, it just screws into here. Now we need to release the speaker from this cover right here. Okay, we're going to reuse this, that way we can screw on this cap again. That way it doesn't look like anything's changed. So in order to do that, you're going to have to use a pick. We're going to insert the pick right where these two holes are. You're just going to pry against. So I'll do it gently. Good thing that's trash. <laughs> so here's the ring that we just took off. We're going to put this new speaker right in here. There's no tabs or anything, so what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to have to glue it. So they provide the adhesive, we're just going to put it all around here, and then we have to let it sit for an hour before we can reassemble it. So let's just do that real quick. On the instructions on their website, they do say that some of the kits might come with clips. And I really wish that it came with clips because I'm not a fan of, you know, using any type of adhesive on anything. I'd rather have it secure with either like a screw, snap it in, or have some kind of clip. So if they had a clip for this, that would be great. So your kit might come with a clip, otherwise you will have to glue it. And I can see there are indents right here where you would probably put a metal clip. So for us, we don't have a choice. We're just going to glue it. So 
So the glue has fully cured. We gave it a lot longer than one hour, but it's ready to go now. So let's put this back on that rear door panel. Put this cover from the front of the door panel in first. Then you can see how it screws in. So you're just gonna twist it to screw it in. Be careful with these wires, you don't wanna mess those up. Once it's nice and snug, we can use the adapter and plug it in. Just clips onto it right here. And this part goes to the factory harness on the door. So this needs to go up through this door handle hole for the window switch. And then this part gets plugged into the speaker. Just push the connectors in together. Now you wanna slide this door latch cable into the handle. Just slides in and then you push it down to secure it. Before you put the door panel on, first thing you wanna do is put this lock through the hole. Now we're gonna line everything up. And then you just start tapping it in. So we can put all the screws back in once the door panel is secure. The long one goes right here. Then the rest of the ones are the same size. One up here, one inside this opening, and two on the bottom of the handle. All the screws are now tightened so we can hook up the window switch. Just push the connector in. Make sure you have the proper orientation and you just slide it in place. We, don't, we actually don't have the trim on this side, but if you were, you wanna slide these two tabs in first, and then you push it into these holders. And lastly, you wanna put the covers on the bottom of this. We only have one, so this section right here slides in first, like that, and then you push this in. So you slide it in, and then you push that up. So if you have a Cooper or a sedan, your speakers are gonna be underneath the rear shelf where you can just lift up the grills and get access to it. I have a video on that, I'll have it linked down below. For the wagon, we have never filmed this before on a wagon, so we're just gonna show you guys how we do it on here as well. The wagon is a lot more involved in order to get to the speaker. It's also the same process if you were gonna you know, change your rear shocks out on the wagon. You have to remove all of this back section like I'll show you here. So you have to remove all of these plastics so you can get access to this right here because the speaker is inside of this. So we're gonna remove all of this and get to it. So start out, just empty your trunk. We're gonna remove all of this as well. One thing you wanna be very aware of is when you're taking off all this stuff, most of these plastics are gonna be very brittle. So we've got to remove this a few times and we already know most of this stuff is cracked or broken. So just be aware of that. Chances are you are gonna crack some things and break a few things. With most of the trunk cleared out, now we can remove a lot of this carpeting. So there's this one right here is held in with two 10 millimeter nuts, one right here and one on this side. And make sure these all these nuts are plastic, so just be careful. So now we should be able to lift this up and that way we have access to remove all of this stuff. So first let's go on this side and start taking off all of this. This is the battery cover. You want to just pull it up and then it will slide out. These two tabs go inside these holes right here. And we've got a few t more 10 millimeter nuts. And then we can take off this cover right here by pushing this tab in. And now that we've got these two nuts out, we can also lift this straight up and out. We'll do the same thing on this side. Push this tab in. Now we're gonna start out by removing these plastics right here. So there's a Phillips screw right here. Another Phillips screw in this cavity right here. Now in order to remove this, there's a couple of push pins holding it in place. So we're gonna start from the top, pry it out. Here are the two push pins right on the top. We're gonna disconnect this light so we can just pull this whole plastic piece out. So in order to disconnect the light, you have to push this section in so you can push it out from this holder. And then the light, the connector, you just pull the connector out. So we're just gonna continue on this side get this one completely disassembled first. So next you're gonna have this Phillips screw right here. 
Now we got to remove this cover. That way there's another screw behind this. So the cover you just want to lift up. And it's going to be attached to the seat belt. So you can remove the seat belt through this opening right here. Like that. Inside this hole right here, there's a 10 millimeter nut that you have to remove. Now there's two more screws in this hole right here and one on the other side. They're both T25. So you can use a screwdriver or a socket, that's T25, to remove them. With the screws removed, you can lift this straight up. Remove this push pin. So in order to get this plastic seat belt cover bracket off, you have to remove this part of the seat. So you just want to pull from the top up here. Just get your fingers behind there and you just pull it straight out. And then you lift up. So it's like tucked in here, so you lift up. All right, we're going to have to remove this pillar as well. So there's going to be push pins on the top right here. So just get your hands in there. Just that one that goes into there. Now there's another Phillips screw right here. That just lifts up and out of the way. Same with this. We can start removing these plastic covers so we can pull this section off. So we'll start out with this one right here. Just want to pry against it. Just these tabs are holding it in place. Then you just lift it up from the bottom. This one you can just leave attached to it. There's a plug that's going to be behind it. We'll remove that after. This one just has two Phillips screws in there that you're going to have to remove. Then we have the final push pin right here. The final step is to remove this. So we're going to lift this up. You have to lift this off of this where the nut was. And then there is a plug right here for that cigarette lighter or a test report. Just pull it off. And now we can see the speaker. It's already been changed. Oh yeah, I did put the upgraded ones in here already. Last time when I took them out. <laughs> These are bath sound ones, I think. <laughs> well, at least now I've got just the coilovers. All right, let's continue. All right, so now we have access to the speaker. So we're just gonna remove these three Phillips screws and we can unplug it. So I've already actually changed these before when I did the coilovers on here. So they're, they should be fine, but we're gonna go ahead and put the bath sound ones that they sent us. That way we get the full, you know, comprehensive review. Yep, these are the bath sound ones. Good thing you have two other E46s. <laughs> yep. Pull those out. So here's the new speaker. The red goes to the yellow, the black goes to the brown. I'm gonna just tuck that in. On this one, you don't necessarily have to remove this rubber because there's enough space to put it in it. On the door panels, we didn't have enough space so we had to remove that rubber. Now we can finally put everything back together. So we're gonna start by putting the last thing that we took off. Don't forget to plug the that cigarette lighter back in or accessory port. There's only one way it goes, so just plug that in. You have to lift this again. I'm gonna make sure this goes over that stud. Before you can put this plastic piece in all the way, you need to slide this in. See this slides around this where the glass goes and then make sure this wire is not caught anywhere and make sure it sits on the stud. 
and it slides behind this carpet, like the black plastic tabs off of this carpet thing. Then we can secure this section, slide it in its place, and we can start putting the nut back on, the 10 millimeter nut right there, the Phillips screw, the two push pins. Before we put this black uh, latch in with the two T25 bolts or screws. Here's the 10 millimeter nut. There's the Phillips screw. And then if you ever had a screw right here, make sure you put that back in as well. We don't, so we're not putting it back. Now we can slide this latch in place. You can see the two screws. Now for the latch down here, are just two Phillips screws. It's weird seeing Germans use Phillips screws. It's usually all Torx or socket or hex. This cover just slides in place and you just want to line up that push pin and then just you just want to make sure that your weather strip is around this cover just slides over it I'm going to push it in place and then just push it and it will lock it in place the two push pins Next, we're gonna put the seat back in. Make sure the belt is out. And you'll see the tab right here. This tab goes into this. And then this tab right here pushes into this hole right here. Now we have this cover. I'm gonna slide the belt in first. push it in everything will clip in ours is already cracked as you can see so it's going to make a little bit of noise but for the most part it's secure so now we can put the Phillips screw right here now slide this in first get this connector for the light through here plug it in secure one thing you want to be careful is when you're putting this back in, you want to get it behind this weather strip. And then you want to line up the two holes for the push pins. Then you put a Phillips screw right here. This one with the washer. And then the one without the washer goes in this hole right here. And once again, just make sure that this weather strip is around here. So let's go ahead and put this carpeting back in. Just clips in place. These tabs hold it back. And one day I really hope, hopefully soon we're gonna get another interior for this whole wagon, a different color. And when I'm changing out the interior, I'm gonna to try to make sure that there are no creaks and squeaks when we're doing that whole interior change. That's gonna be a task, but we're really excited to hopefully get this wagon interior looking the way we want it to. But anyways, let's continue with the other side and get this speaker changed out. So this process is pretty much the same as the other side where we're at right now. We're gonna remove this plastic cover first, or pillar. Then we're gonna remove all the stuff that's attached to this, remove this cover, Move that piece of the seat, move this latch, then there's another black plastic, move that, remove that pillar, and then whatever screws are holding this in and push pins, pull it off, and then we can change the speaker out. Let's get right to it. All right, so the first Phillips screw is in this panel right here. Second one's right here. Third one is in here. Now the main thing that you have to have the order correct is removing these. But like taking off the screws on this, taking that off, taking these push pins off, all that you don't really have to do in a specific order. We're gonna try to keep it as order friendly as we can. So we're gonna pull it off from the top right here. There's two push tabs. Slide it up. 
push the tab in for the light, push it out, remove the connector, and remove this cover. So this one, this part is already broken. We'll go ahead and pull out the seat while we're here. This, as you can see on this seat, this tab stayed on here instead of coming off with the seat. So it's gonna go ahead and push this middle section in and pull it out. So I just pushed in right here and pulled it out and secure this back onto the seat. On the other side, we were missing that screw. It is a Phillips screw. Like I said, I'm not worried about the other side since we're gonna be changing this whole interior out, hopefully. That's why I didn't even bother trying to find another screw. We've got that 10 millimeter nut in here. But it might be a little bit easier if we remove this latch with these two T25 screws first. Push pin. Then we've got the pillar. Just that one tab. Slide it out. Another Phillips screw. Just lift it up. Lift this up. Pull out from the top and slide it up. I've got these two Phillips screws. One more push pin down here. I can lift this and lift that up. You want to lift it up first so you can get this off of that stud and then pull it out. And now we have three Phillips screws. Here's the new speaker, the red and the black. The red goes to the blue on this side and the black goes to the brown. Once you have all three screws secure, we can put this back on. So lift it again, you want to slide it from the top, that way this, this section sits on that stud. You want to slide this in. Start with the latch, the two Phillips screws, get it lined up. We can put this cover back on, slide the bottom tabs in first, and you just push these in. Now we can put this cover back in first. You wanna make sure it latches onto that window sill right there, it goes on the stud, and then goes behind this black plastic tab on the carpet. Then this black plastic seat belt cover, you wanna make sure the tab goes behind the carpet. The tab goes in front of here, not behind it. And you want to make sure it sits inside of this stud on this. Now we'll start by putting this Phillips screw in. Put the two push pins in. Ten millimeter nut. The other Phillips screw in the front. One more Phillips screw right here. The two T25s. Get this pillar in place. Just make sure the weather strip goes around it. Make sure the seat belt goes around it. Make sure you line up this tab right here that goes in there. The tab on the bottom goes in its opening as well. And you're just gonna push it in. You'll hear it clip in. Make sure the weather strip is still around it properly. Now we've got this plastic cover. If yours isn't broken, then you wanna put the seat belt around it first right here. 
So like that. Then you just get it lined up. And you push it in. And now we have this pillar with the light. Let's slide it in place first down here. Put the connector through. Plug it in. You want to slide this section into the pillar first. And you just push it and it'll clip in. Now we've got these two push tabs on the top. You want to line them up. Get the weather strip around it. And now we've got the two Phillips screws. The one with the washer goes right here. And this one goes in here. Let's get the battery tray cover back on. You just wanna slide it down. There's a tab right here on top of this holder for the battery holder that slides into this section. And you have the two studs that slide into there. And right here you're gonna have these two 10 millimeter nuts with these washers on the bottom. You have this tray cover. Slides in like that. Keep this strap out. Slide this in. And then we'll get it to latch on up there. Got these two 10 millimeter nuts, one on each side. Slide this in. Washer. Cover. All your junk. <laughs> and the grill that your fiance broke off of the front bumper. Oh my God. <laughs> More carpet. And that's how you change the speakers in the back of a wagon. All that for two speakers. It's ridiculous. Especially when you already had bath sound speakers in there and you have forgot. <laughs> oh. But these are newer, so still a plus. So you guys already saw my review. I'm very happy with these speakers. I hope you guys enjoyed the DIY, especially if you have a wagon. There's not too many videos showing how to disassemble all that stuff in the back. But be very careful when you're doing this. You don't want to break any of those plastics because then it's just going to rattle. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you liked the video. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in our next video.